you have created a career to die for in terms of mm -hmm. classical work, Stratford, film, television. No other actor until, Canadian actor until you, have been able to make that. We've had Canadian actors who've done well and then go down to LA and they live or die and they go down to whatever. We've never had anyone like you who's built this classical theater career here and then took it into TV and then took it into the States and does all the levels in the States and maintains them all and lives here. That had not been done before. So hmm. was that your smarts antennae or did you help did you have a great agent, or how did that work, and how do you balance this stuff? I'm sure it's founded on nothing more than sheer terror. But, a well, because I was here thriving at the Stratford Festival for a long time, and doing well. And at one point, I auditioned for a film called 32 Short Films about Glenn Gould. I got the part, I did the part, the movie did well, uh, um, it did well. It was a succès d'estime. Nobody saw it, but everybody talked about it, and that was helpful. So it got me into doors that I would never have dreamt of getting into in America and beyond, because it played Venice and Berlin and LA and Sundance. You know, you know. I met, auditioned for for uh, Robert Redford for something, and all he really wanted to talk about was why he'd programmed thirty two short films and blah 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 blah. So. I had an immense advantage from that. However, I was not in any way convinced that th there was going to be a future there. Francois Girard, who directed it, said, you know, you could do more film, but you could and should, but you have to be available. And I said, well, what do you mean by available? For me, available means unemployed. And he said, well, essentially, yeah, that's what it does mean. You've got to risk not being comfortably here at Stratford. And I said, well, at the time, I suddenly had child, ex-wives, uh, you know, uh, issues, costs, I, I, all of that stuff. And he said, if, if you want to go into film and television, you can't be here. I said, well, <laughs> if I don't go now, I'll never go. On the 32 short films. The heels of 32 short films. I'd done film and stuff before and done some television here and some other stuff that had an American presence, but I didn't have that calling card. And ringing in my ears always was James Blendick's advice, a great member of the company here for years, but also someone who with Chris Plummer had braved out LA and New York and all of that stuff, had done his Kojaks and Streets of San Francisco's and whatnot. And he said over a drink, no doubt, at one of those after show meetings, he said, don't go to the party till you're invited. And I said, what do you mean, Jimmy? And he said, it's really hard, and it's a harsh place, and they don't give a shit if you're a good actor. You're talking LA, New York. Yeah, they don't care. So unless they have a specific use for you, you're just gonna be you know, treading water. If you've got something specific you can go in with, then maybe. And I am not going to claim to be brave or heroic at all. I was afraid to risk leaving a good job here and great parts and great colleagues and friends when I needed money. And I, need, I mean, it was the worst time of my life to go but the only time to go. And so I went to, to LA and New York. I did what I've now, you know, I, I call them surgical strikes. I go in, I, I let my, you know, I had an agent here in Canada, I'm no longer represented here, but I, I had an agent here who had some relationships with some agents in New York and LA. So we built bridges and I went and I met people. And I met people like Sidney Lumet. Sidney Lumet had seen 32 short films in a theater. Before I knew it, I was doing a Sidney Lumet picture. Before I knew it, I was crossing Manhattan. But I'm, I'm working for Sidney, and I'm meeting, I'm meeting Milos Foreman. I'm, I, I'm meeting Mike Nichols. I'm meeting Robert Redford. And they're meeting you like this young Canadian actor. He did Who this did really this little art film. film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's up at Stratford. He's down. Yeah, We're and, then, and then you get a job for... HBO, that's where the writing is. I'm now working for Frank Pearson, who won the Oscar 
with Sidney Lumet, won the Oscar for writing Dog Day Afternoon. And now we're working on a thing for HBO about Harry Truman. And that's working with a bunch of great... And did they ever say you have to move down? The, all of the agents say, yes, you have to move down. And did you? No, I never did. How did I will that work then? You want the truth? Yes. I pretended I was always on the cusp of coming. <laughs> Good I, for you. I'm coming. I will be with you. Here's the thing. I've just had a child, and my wife is a director, a choreographer and director, and she's got this. I, I just, we're going to be here in a moment. Just got to finish this thing. Got to go back to Canada to do this other thing, and then we'll be right back. And in the meantime, I do another surgical strike to, to New York. Go, hello, hello, hello. And you're going in on H1s, or what are you going in on? Uh, this is another part of the truth. I was born in Boston. I'm an American ah. citizen. All right, there you I go. I can do that. And that, I thought it was because I was talented. And I realized because my brilliant uh, accountant and, and, and business manager, Gary Kudlow, said, no, it has nothing to do with that. It's because you're an American. You can go. It's more easy for you. So I was spared all of the agony of having to do lawyers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because I had been, I'd been born there. I, I had lived you know, as a child, a baby. There. So I had the, the, the paperwork.